In this video, we'll talk about IEEE referencing concepts. IEEE is the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers. They are a consortium of engineers who have come together to provide guidelines for how, for example, we publish documents. IEEE is not the only referencing style, but it is extremely common in engineering, and as a result, for the entire course, we will be using IEEE referencing. There are four key concepts to understand. The first is the in-text citation. When you need a citation, how do you put it in your text? What does it look like? And how do you number them? Citation numbering is extremely important. It allows the reader to find the particular reference in your references list. Repeated citations from the same source means that when you take multiple different pieces of information but from only a single source, for example a single book, what does that look like in the document? And finally, the references section. In this video, we'll only be going over the concepts. In subsequent videos, we'll see how to make these concepts appear using Microsoft Word. So I'm going to be using a document, but I won't show you how to actually set up your citations until future videos. So we've seen this document before. This is the document I'm writing about MTE 100 learning objectives. The first thing we should see is how do we do an in-text citation and what does that mean? IEEE is focused around the idea of citing things when it is relevant to do so. That means that if I'm making a claim or taking data from somewhere else, the citation should come in the text where that claim or data is placed. Here, I have a sentence saying that it consists of two main parts, it referring to the course. I then have this thing here, a square bracket and a number and another square bracket. That is the in-text citation. It's essentially a number that then I can go to my references page and find that particular citation in the text. It's called in text because the citation appears literally in the text that you're reading. There are times in which it should come before and times in which it should come after. We're not very strict on this format, but the general guidelines are as follows. Your in text citation should come before the data as it does here if there's a large list or paragraph of information that you're taking from a source. What you're telling the reader is, what comes next comes from this source, rather than having to cite every single individual piece. For example, imagine as though I were citing this for every single individual piece of this claim. Well, I would need to cite design communications and professionalism. That's a term that comes from a different document. I'd have to say it is a lecture and workshop based course. I'd have to cite that. I'd have to say students are exposed to the design process from a technical professional communications perspective. So this paragraph would be littered with in-text citations, making it very hard to read. But since the entire paragraph, and in fact this entire list of paragraphs, comes from this one source, the citation is appropriately placed before. On the other hand, for a detailed description of the course C1, this is when I have only a single piece of information to convey to the reader and I want to direct them to an appropriate source. Then it can come after the claim. Again, we're not going to be very strict in that particular format. The next thing we want to talk about is citation numbering. You'll notice that my citations start at 1. I have three citations of the source 1. Because all of these pieces of information come from the same source, they must have the same number. The first citation in the text is given 1. It is given the number is in which it appears. It's because this is the first time I'm using a citation, the first number should be 1. The next number is the next citation in the list, 2, which you can see here. Finally, there are many different ways in many different styles to show a list of references. The IEEE style requires a section called References. Okay, So the title is actually relevant. In IEEE style, the appropriate title for this section is References. It is not, for example, Works Cited, as you may have seen in high school, or Bibliography. References must appear in the order in which they are cited in the text, and they must be preceded by their number. This way, when I'm looking at an in-text citation, 
say this one here, directing me to reference number three, I can then go to my reference list and very quickly find reference number three. It's then up to me to actually go to the internet or the library and find the reference. But if they're labeled appropriately, it's very fast to see where which information came from which source. Now luckily, Microsoft Word has features that allow us to do all of this automatically. We don't have to remember the appropriate citation formats, which is why I didn't even talk about how we cite different types of documents. Microsoft Word can handle all of that for us. This video is not appropriate for it because it would make it far too long. In subsequent videos, we're going to discuss all of these things. So to recap, the IEEE referencing has four important concepts. The first is the in-text citation. When you need to refer the reader to something, it should be done in the text. Citation numbering must start at one and carry on sequentially from there. When you have repeated citations from the same source, you must use the same number. Now this is true even if it's out of order. For example, if I cite source number one and then source number two and then information from source one, the appropriate citation for the last part would be citation 1, not citation 3. Finally, IEEE requires a section called References. There's a subtle difference between references, works cited, and bibliography that is not really worth going into. The key thing to take away is that the title must be References, 